It's Malanka time, motherfuckers. And today in Malanka Talks, we're going to be talking about Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, before we get started, I would like to note that this gameplay includes me being a retard, a noob, and not having the best guns or best upgrades, etc., etc. Uh, this was recorded uh, when I was first starting. I just wanted some random clip to fill in my Malanka Talks. You know, stuff like this. And also, since I'm talking about Wildlands, you might as well have the Wildlands clip. So the story in Wildlands is really lackluster. Um, it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, you're taking down the cartel, that's it. So while people are doing sick things like killing people, child trafficking, drugs, and other things like that, there really are no memorable characters to really care about. Uh, other, it just isn't. It's just there to just, yeah, it, there's nothing to it really. Uh, you shouldn't play for the story. The only thing you should be playing Wildlands for is the gameplay. Um, that's pretty much it. The gameplay, though, is good. It's not great. I definitely don't think this game is worth $60 plus whatever DLC. Uh, it depends upon the DLC, the prices, and the content that's in it, but you get what I mean. I do think this game is not worth $60. Um, overall, though, I do have more positive things to say about it. While the story is extremely lackluster... Uh, the whole point of the game is to play with friends. It's pretty much the selling point. And then the second selling point is, and the one thing that I personally really enjoy about the game, is the fact that they give you an objective, like kidnap this person, or kill this person, or get some documents, that you could truly go about it any way you want. You could walk in there with a pistol and silently kill people. You could walk in there and avoid, or try to, avoid everyone in the camp and get the documents and walk out. There's a lot of things like this that you can do. You can go in hot. As my Romanian friend put it, Dirty Jack, he says you could act completely tactical or you could act like a complete fucking retard and it works both ways. Which I was very happy about because I'm a little bit of both. But that's one thing I really did enjoy. The fact that you could snipe, you could go in hot, you could be tactical because I wanted to be both. Uh, the fact that you could really plan your way in and really surveillance everything with your drone and blah, 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 which is really nice. And of course, having friends too just makes it all the more better. Now, in terms of guns and stuff, th this is one thing that makes me very, very angry about the game. Is that I, I okay, so I like it and then I don't, but it still pisses me off. Um, is that, so with guns, because the first thing you want to do is, you know, get your favorite gun, get your favorite sniper rifle, and buy the parts, or some blah 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 blah. You can't. You are given, of course, a set gun. You are given a set assault rifle, and a set some machine, uh, some, not some, yeah, some machine gun. And that's it. And you can't really unlock things, because, you know, everyone's so used to getting stuff to unlock like you pick it up and you unlock it but apparently with this game you can't and i found that very frustrating and really retarded because you don't really get the good sniper rifles now technically you can google the best sniper rifle location and the best scope location and the best this location and you could probably from level one attempt to go in there and get them you could struggle a little bit but with four people you could probably easily do it get the best guns and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But overall, I think it's quite shit that you have to go around trying to find, in the later zones too, to even find a decent scope. And who the fuck is talking to me? Oh. And, because a lot of these sniper rifles, because again, mainly on most people I feel like are going to run an assault rifle and a sniper rifle. Because it, it wouldn't make any sense if you didn't, kind of. But a lot of these scopes of the sniper rifles are fucking horrible. They are atrocious. And the fact that to find even a good one is just facepalm. Uh, but overall, though, finding the guns is very bullshit. But also what's bullshit that kind of ties into this is the fact that they have a lot of guns that you have to buy. In the, well, you don't have to buy, take that back. But you could buy in the store, which makes me very, very angry. Because they took out, I don't want to say a lot of guns, but you still took out guns to force people, not not force again, I don't want to use this word, but to entice people to pay real money for the game that probably doesn't even have a huge lifespan 
or whatever. I'm already 20, I think as of right now, I'm about 20 to 30 hours into it, and I'm almost done with the game. So, there's, you, you, do you know what I mean? It's really stupid. Now, cosmetic stuff I can understand, which they do have some cosmetic stuff uh, that you could purchase, which is fine. It's not anything about a game. And this is a si not a single player game, but a single player slash co-op game. So, there's really no multiplayer involved. But it's still rather stupid and just really greedy. But of course it is uh, Tom Clancy, Ubisoft, whatever, EA. Is it EA? I don't even fucking know. I think it's Ubisoft. Right? Yeah. Oh boy. But the jewelry is strong. It's very, very strong. But with the weapons, I, find, I found it kind of stupid that not only did you have to go around... I think you, what they should have done is gone around with searching for the weapons if they really wanted to go that route and searching for the parts for the weapons i think that they should have added a crafting system now you do collect the resources for the rebels because they're poor spicks that you know can't somehow do this on their own or anything else like that they need of course strong americans with their freedom and their bald eagles but there definitely should have been a crafting system. There should have been resources that you could pick up because it would have been a very easy implementation to, you know, gather these extra resources on top of gathering resources for the rebels, etc., etc. Um, just because I would have liked to have craft a specific item instead of fly halfway across the map or Google it to, you know, do this and this and this. I think crafting would have been a really good idea for the game. And you probably could have locked things maybe behind crafting too, such as cosmetic items like pink dildos and other things like that. Or, or you know, golden swastikas with eagles on them or whatever. Whatever the case may be, I think crafting should have been in the game to begin with. Now, in terms of actual gunplay, I think all the guns are pretty nice. I think the sniper rifles are good. Um, I think everything else is just pretty fine. I just wish there was more guns, of course. Easier, not once it's easier to get, but I feel like they don't have to be tedious. They were more upfront instead of having to find the zone or find a location. Or maybe that one gun that you wanted was in the zone that you last chose to go in, which would piss me off. But overall, the guns and the sniper rifles feel pretty good. Uh, I think bullet drop is a little bit lame. Not, I don't want to say unrealistic, but, well, I w not that I want it to be unrealistic, but I feel bullet drop is a little bit bullshit. Um, but also stealth. Stealth in this game works, and then sometimes stealth doesn't, and it's sometimes very, very stupid. Sometimes you could get away with massacring people, especially with camp with missions that says you have to be stealthy, even if someone gets suspected, like... Well, not suspected, but let's say you walk up behind someone and you, or let's say you snipe someone and they're by themselves. You miss. And of course, you're using a suppressor. Then all of a sudden they become alerted. Now, let's say in that one millisecond it took for them to be alerted, you readjusted and killed them. Somehow everyone and their fucking mother is magically alerted. And it, it fucking baffles me that somehow this happened. It baffles me, and it, it it it's infuriating at points um, on certain missions to stealth and then be like, oh, you were you alerted them, now you're fucking you gotta restart. It's like fucking really, and even then, sometimes when uh, there was this one mission where we had to steal the truck and and uh, plant it with well, not steal the truck, then replace it with the truck full of C4. If anyone remembers that mission, and uh, we wanted to kill. Now, let's see, here's the thing. Here's the funny thing. Is that me and my friend wanted to kill these guys in the building that's there. So, we get up there. I had one guy in the right room because they were sleeping upstairs. Now, how many times you tried it? Sometimes they would be downstairs, sometimes upstairs. But there were all three of them were upstairs. And they had the, the first two and I had the one in the separate room. And I we all shot all of our guys at the same time. But... They weren't able to shoot one guy fast enough. Like, he just got up for a millisecond. And we lost. And we had to restart. And then we were just like, you know what? And of course, these are with silencers and the most silenced pistol in the game. The most noise reduction pistol in the game, mind you. So somehow that, you know, they either heard this. Even this when I, like, let's say just killed one guy in the room. The other two would hear them even though they were sleeping. 
and stuff like that. It, it didn't make any fucking sense. But we decided to not kill anyone except one guy because he was just out in the open. And we took the truck and we drove away while some guys far away were looking at us. And how did the slamming of the doors or the car driving away w didn't wake them up even though it was right there? Again, it baffles me at sometimes the stealth in this mission or the being alerted. And this is with full, you know, 15 or I think it's 20 with the bonus metal uh, detection where you're 15 20% no, less likely to be detected or you know reduction whatever you want to call it and other stuff like this and it, it, again it just baffles me but the stealth can be fine it's just that some things are just are just really and again with the ai also uh sometimes even we're playing on normal you know just av you know, but the ai is way too accurate at times just way too accurate and sometimes they spot you even when there's certain missions with where you go into tunnels and stuff like this. Like, we could clear everyone outside, and then let's say someone's patrolling and coming out, and they notice that all of the guys are dead or something. They will automatically spot you if you're on top of the mine or to the right or to the left. You could be wearing a ghillie suit and camouflage with detection. They'll fucking randomly spot you and kill you. Well, not kill you, but just shoot at you. It's really ridiculous on how they can... Uh, detect you and it just i want to say auto aim but it really feels like that they just auto aim and fuck your day up really hard though i will say though even with my problems with the ai as i just mentioned the ai can be good and it's actually really interesting too because it's the first ai that i've really seen that actually um surround like let's say if you're stuck in a building or you're sitting behind heavy cover they actually try to flank you and overwhelm you i remember uh we went uh in hot and we were stuck in a building and they just surrounded the building and then they would slowly come up the stairs to try and flush us out and i thought that was really cool and very interesting i've never seen that before in a game because usually the ai just stands outside and shoots at a window that you may be at or shoots at the door if you try to leave but never to surround the building and actually try to get up the ai has its dumb and smart moments but overall i don't know can't be any worse than some ais in games but you know all that good stuff now for uh, this is kind of a little bit of a funny thing i guess is that uh, two things that kind of go hand in hand together is one vehicle control is fucking atrocious especially plane and helicopter control are uh, it's definitely meant for a console i'm pretty sure uh but for pc since that's what i'm playing on it is atrocious now coinciding with that is fucking destructible objects you could run over a metal sign sometimes but you can't run over a small sapling with a tank or a more armored vehicle. It's just baffling in how some things you could run over and some things you can't. I, w I really wish, though, there was more destructible objects in this game. Because sometimes you could destroy a fence with C4, but some other fences you can't. Even with giant metal slates, you can't destroy. And I really wish some of these things were destroyable with C4 and or a more heavily armored car or a truck or whatever the case may be but even though it's not much of a problem it's still a rather big huge pain in the ass now overall some things are uh, okay but the problem with wildlands is even though it's fun to stealth and take things down your way and do it all stealth or do it loud or have fun with your friends and do stupid shit the one thing that um really sucks is the repetitive missions it really sucks from convoys to taking a plane and then flying into a rebel landing strip to i think uh, those are the only two i'm pretty sure or you will tag the convoy or something like this those are the only side missions you pretty have except the rebel ones the rebel ops are definitely not worth it i, I re unless you're playing by yourself doing the rebel missions are definitely not worth it the only ones that are worth doing is getting um the one to have the rebels drop you off a vehicle and upgrade it to a helicopter and, or and or armored vehicle it's the only one that's worth it because you could be in the middle of nowhere and you definitely need a helicopter or armored vehicle let's say if you're tracing a convoy and you're just completely fucked yeah you're going to need that uh that uh vehicle and all of that 
Um, what else about the game? I think the one thing that this game definitely could have used is more open world content. And, but uh, not open, open world content, but dynamic content that randomly happens. Because the world is, feels pretty much dead. Now, rebels will attack Unidad or Unidad. You know, rebels will attack the cartel if they, you know, come across each other and stuff. But the world just definitely feels dead. There's random people walking out, you know on the on the streets and other things but it doesn't really feel to me alive where there's things happening there's only things happening if you're progressing the story or if you're doing well not even if you're doing the side missions even the story to a point it doesn't really do anything you're just eradicating a general not general but some kind of cartel person and blah 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 i i wish there was more again just more dynamic more things to make the world feel alive more things to be like hey i can go do that over there or hey over here there's something to do instead of going from repetitive side mission to side mission to main mission to main mission kind of thing and because again the story is lackluster and blah 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 blah. i wish there was a uh, something like this that was available in the world that was available to the player Overall, right now, I can't think of anything else to really comment on about Ghostlands. Ghostlands. <laughs> to comment about Wildlands, uh, my remaining friend will have a fun time with me saying that, Jesus Christ. Um, is that, I mean, it's fun with four-player four co-op. It's fun to do this. But you definitely, if you really sit back and see, you see the problem with the game. And again, it doesn't have a long lifespan. And that's the problem with these type of games, the, op the open world and stuff like this is that, and especially again with Ubisoft or whomever makes the game, is that no dynamic content, repetitive side missions only give the game so much life and even at the end after 20 hours you already have all the best talents and stuff you could use the healing drone explosive drone steady aim faster regen bullet sponge you know will increase bullet resistance but i just said bullet sponge and you'll have all this stuff and then after that it's just kind of like i don't know I don't know. I still really enjoy the game, and I think that if you and four friends want to play it, you probably should. Maybe if you could get it on a discount on a summer sale or a Christmas sale or something, then yeah, maybe DLCs will add to the game where it's lacking of. I'm not sure. But overall, I think it's an okay game, and it's definitely fun, but I still don't think it's worth 60 I think it may be worth $39.99. Or eh, thirty nine ninety nine sounds about right. I don't think it it would be too low if it was twenty nine ninety nine. Definitely forty dollars. I think is the go to price, not sixty. Definitely not sixty. But again, we'll see with the DLC and everything else like that. But anyways, I would like to know what you guys think about Wildlands. Post in the comments below because I'm quite curious. I normally don't ask this because I'm not really gay, but I really really would like to know what other people think about Ghost Recon Wildlands. And uh, if they agree with what I've said about the game, maybe a little bit too hard, maybe a little bit too nice, etc., etc. I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.